Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I will show you how I created this artist book using the PM Artist Studio prompt, Get Squirrely, along with some inspiration that I got from a recent hike in the hills above Loch Ness. Now, I saw these tree roots that were above ground that just fascinated me. I loved the texture of them, I loved the colour, the way they kind of branched out, the roots stretching out where the soil had been eroded and sat now within uh, pine needles etc. So I took a piece of A2 cartridge paper by C. White of Brighton, I drew out my roots. Now I realised that I couldn't have them coming to an end. I needed something that would be able to hold something behind them. So as much as I liked the roots that came to kind of sharp points, I knew that I couldn't leave them in as such. So this process of cutting these out actually took me around about two hours. The the A2 sheet of paper I simply cut into three horizontal strips and each form a part of the artist book. So there we go, two hours later with all of those cut out. I'm now going to take these two colours and I'm just simply using my gel plate as a palette here. I'm mixing the two together and what I want to do is to get some colour down and on to this. I felt it was quicker to do it this way than to sit at this point and paint them individually. So all I'm really trying to do is get a base coat on them and I wanted it covered on both sides because I really didn't want any white to show through. So these were the Vallejo paints I got recently and uh, as I say just mixing the two together. So the transoxide red with the Payne's grey mixed in gave me that kind of colour that I wanted. I knew this would change a bit, but that was fine because that was just a base colour. So you'll see now that I'm going to take the Payne's grey and mix it in with some white. The colour of the roots actually fascinated me. They were, they were this kind of just greyish colour. And if you watch my kind of show and tell video, which was part of the PM Artist Studio Hop, I say a bit more about the inspiration and what I was trying to do, the kind of whole concept for this. Now, it took me two hours to cut out the various pieces here. It took me, I don't know, probably an hour and a half to sit and then paint in. So what you'll see here is me painting in those roots. Now I didn't want them to be a flat colour, so I've taken a slightly lighter colour here against the background to give more definition to the roots. And I will come in again with, uh, I think I come in with some darker grey, I think I come in with some pencils, just to add more detail and more texture to them. Because the roots and places were almost quite gnarly, you know, where they, they kind of branched off into separate roots, there was often kind of knotty bits, for want of a, a better way to describe it. As I say, they really did fascinate me. They, I, I, I loved watching them. It was all through this hike that I saw them and I think it's going to be the inspiration for a few things that I do uh, over the coming months or so. Although this was time consuming, I actually really enjoyed doing it. There was something almost meditative about doing this. Uh, I could say likewise in terms of cutting out the roots, albeit the end of my index finger was actually throbbing by the end of it. I'd bought that swivel craft knife. I'm glad I did, it worked well for this. I needed a new craft knife. I'd already been planning this and when I saw the swivel one I thought yeah that, that might work well for what I want to do here. So here I have these Derwent colour pencils. 
and I really like these Derwent Colour Soft pencils. So I take, I think initially I take a dark brown. I swithered about a few colours, but I take the dark brown. And all I'm trying to do here is to add in a bit of shadow, a bit of the texture that was showing on those tree roots, and just trying to bring out a bit more of the detail. It's probably a little bit hard to see it. I also wanted, of course, to fill in some of the bits, although I'd gone over uh, with a brayer to cover it in paint, I do want to cover in, as far as possible, all those little white bits, but wanted to give the sense that the roots were 3D, you know, so these are. this is not just a flat lying on the ground. I use the white to bring a bit of highlight to where the root was sticking up further you know, and there was a bit of light hitting it. So I want to bring in all that sort of detail. And here I am, I just go back and forward, back and forward or across the entirety of the sheet. I'd go almost from end to end and then I'd go back to the big beginning again. And uh, yeah, this, this, this took a while, but again, I, I was totally into it. I was in flow, whatever you want to call it. Uh, really enjoying it, trying to get those kind of gnarly bits on there just to show the texture. Now, when I cut this out, I did leave a slight border at the bottom. I think it was only about half a centimeter. Uh, so less than, oh, I'm trying to work it out, about a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch along the bottom, quarter of an inch along the top and both sides give or take, you know, a millimeter, because I knew that I needed to be able to fix this to what would be the back of the uh, artist book. So I knew I needed some way of fixing it so it couldn't just be the roots itself. And I also needed something that would hold in what I want to put in it. So here I am again with the white uh, I don't think that was a colour soft that time. I think that was a Prismacolor. I'm now taking Burnt Umber and Buff Titanium and I'm going to mix these two together. And again, all I'm doing here is using the gel plate as a mixing palette. I find this quite a useful way just to mix colours together. I'm adding in some matte medium here and actually I was just using this as a way to kind of thin down the paints just to make them go a little bit further. I think I was just about out of the buff titanium so I wanted it just to go a little bit further and again what I was doing was using this as a bit of a base colour so that just allowed me to you know, thin it out just a bit, rather than simply using water. But I wanted to lighten this a little bit, so I added in some titanium white. And I think all the paints here are System 3 acrylics by De La Rowney. So yeah, lightening that up a bit. Just using my palette knife there to spread it across the second piece of the paper that I cut. So as I say, a A2 piece of paper cut horizontally uh, three pieces exactly the same size. So then just taking the catalyst tool and spreading it out further with that. Again, this was very much a base coat going on. I then took the remaining piece of paper and did the same to it. I used the exact same colour. So now taking those two Vallejo paints again and adding to what's here because I want to darken this up a bit. So just mixing in a bit of both there and it's giving me quite a kind of grey tone which was really what I was looking for. And this is an old foam brush. It's it's solid, you know, it's been used that many times, it's solid. And all I was doing with this was taking the very end of it, dipping it into the paint, and then moving it 
across the paper, just getting lines. And what I was trying to create here was the sense of all the the matter that come from the trees, etc., that was lying around the roots. So a lot of pine needles that were composting down, a lot of other material that was composting down and sitting around the roots, underneath it. You know, you could literally dig your fingers in uh, and underneath some of the roots, you know, through this. So using a sponge here, just darkening it up a little bit in places, just trying to get that sense of the colours of, of the forest floor. Now, I wasn't intent on making it exactly the same. This was very much abstracted, but I was trying to keep quite muted colours because, you know, there wasn't anything all that bright when looking down. Look elsewhere and yes, there, 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 there was bright green material, but not on the forest floor. So jumping ahead now, I, I did add some burnt umber to that as well. I printed out a number of quotes. These were all quotes from women about autumn. And I decided I was just going to print them out. Initially, I was going to write them out in kind of longhand or whatever, but I decided to print them and glue them on. And I'm quickly going to tell you what those quotes were. Autumn in felted slipper shuffles on, muted yet fiery. Vita Sackville West. Autumn writes her signature in the zinnias, Gladys Tabor. It was a heavenly day, aflame with autumn, Anne Bosworth Green. Here and there on the branch of an oak, a congress of leaves still clung, rigid as flakes of bronze, Martha Ostenso. Autumn burned brightly, a running flame through the mountains, a torch flung to the trees, Faith Baldwin. Autumn glows upon us like a splendid evening. It is the very sunset of the year. Mary Russell Mitford. And I will leave those quotes in the description box below and the source of them uh, as far as I know them. So here I'm taking the Art Graph uh, Taylor style blocks. They go on like watercolours but do dry permanent. And for the this side of the cards where I had to quote, I really just wanted to give a, more of an autumn feel, you know, in the terms of the colours. And I think that earth tones of, of these blocks just play into autumn so well. I like earthy colours. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't just associate these sort of colours with autumn, but, you know, when I looked at them, I thought, yeah, but it, it, it's autumn in a cork container, just as it is sitting there. So, you know, just playing about here with a small paintbrush, blending them in in places, not worrying about them too much. So here I am, back to my uh, colour soft pencils taking a dark brown and all I'm going to go do is to go round the pieces that I've cut out. It was really just to give a bit of definition to these and I think it just helps the quotes stand out a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so again that took a few minutes just to do that but uh, I was enjoying reading the quotes again as I did that. As I said in my show and tell video, and I will leave a link to that below, and do check out the other people, please, that, that, that were in the Get Squirrely Hop, because there's some amazing work in there. Uh, and, you know, thanks again to PM Artist Studio for hosting that, and to Sharon from Texture Junkies for helping organise the hop. Amazing videos in there, so go and get inspiration from those artists as well, please. But yeah, so just reading the quotes again, and when I I googled for quotes, it was all quotes from men that came up. Originally, I was going to do John Muir quotes. John Muir was born not far from here, from where I live, and I greatly admire his work. And then I thought, no, I'm going to look for something with a lot of autumn quotes, 
and it was all quotes from men and I thought where are the women there must be quotes from women so I went in search of those and came across some beautiful quotes and you know I don't often do that I will will look to have things balanced but I just felt on this occasion yeah I wanted some quotes from women so here I am using some leaves from the garden fallen leaves and all I'm doing now I've got that on the, a smaller gel plate uh, again, I'm just using that as a kind of palette, testing out the leaf here to see if I get a decent enough print. I'm not looking for anything that's high definition or anything. I just want to give the sense of some of those leaves. I was in Loch Ness, uh, I suppose, just before autumn hit. So I'm kind of imagining it now with even more of an autumn theme around it. So I wanted just to reflect that in some way. I keep saying I was in Loch Ness. I mean, I was in the Loch Ness area. I was at Loch Ness. I didn't actually go into it. I think it would have been too cold. So just getting some of those leaf prints down, just again to give that hint of autumn. I called this artist book Autumn Themed, but that was just because I couldn't come up with a better name. I did want to give it a different name. I've not come up with that yet and I might call it something different in future. And then what I basically did once these were finished was to tuck everything in and behind the roots. And in just a moment I'm going to give you a clip from the show and tell where I actually take everything out and I'll just speak very briefly to that. So obviously you can go back to the show and tell video and listen to everything that I was saying. Some of it was about the hop, of course, and about how you could follow the various links through. But I spoke in more detail about the concept for this, so about how squirrels hide their food at this time of year, so hence they get squirrely, how I was inspired by the tree roots sitting above ground, and how I wanted to hide something. I suppose it would be nourishing to me. I didn't actually say that, but in a sense, it's about what would be nourishing to me during the autumn months. And that was to take those quotes that I came across. And basically what I did was rather than hiding food underneath those tree roots and then, you know, all that lovely, gorgeous, decaying stuff that come off the trees etc. Uh, I've hidden some quotes. I had a couple of the, the, the tags that just had leaf prints on it. Uh, I should say what I did was I, I glued this down in various places. So I glued the bottom edge down, I glued the side edges down and down the folds I just put tiny bits of glue where I could, where the folds were on both the back sheet and the front sheet. And then of course I've got the beauty of those quotes hidden in amongst there. So that is how I created what I've called this autumn themed artist book. Uh, this is very much a quick run through how I created the book, but I hope it gives you, you know, a sense of how it was done and I hope you can take some inspiration from it. So, you know, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to leave me a comment. If you've not subscribed, then, you know, all that good stuff about subscribing if you like this and you want to see more things like it. But if you made it to this point, then thank you ever so much for staying still being here. I really do appreciate it. So do take care. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.